from iconic one-liner a minute tour de forces to award-winning show stealers. These characters weren't here to play games or be quickly discarded. I'm Gareth from whatculture.com and here are the 10 best TV characters who only appear in one scene. Number 10, The Mad King, Game of Thrones. The history of the Mad King, Ares II Targaryen, was one that reverberated around Westeros long after he was dramatically cut down by Jaime Lannister. Yet for all of the stories and tales, including the aforementioned Jaime's moving bathtub recounting of the moment he stabbed the wildfire-obsessed king in the back, we'd never actually witnessed the infamous Targaryen on our screens in all his incestuous madness. That all changed in Season 6, however, when Bran Stark took a detailed look into the past as he fled from some White Walkers, we were suddenly treated to the scene that Jamie had described all those years before. Here, Ares is seen screaming, burn them all, as he sits on the Iron Throne, and during his eventual killing at the hands of the Knight. It may have been brief, but these brief flickers of history finally gave us a face and a visual to put to those many nutty tales of a fallen king. Number 9, The Fisher King, Merlin. Another Game of Thrones alumni making an appearance on our list. Here we have the mighty Donald Sumter in one of his most overlooked and largely underrated roles to date. Coming during the Merlin Season 3 episode, The Eye of the Phoenix, Sumter makes a one-off appearance as the Fisher King, Merlin, Gwaine, and Arthur are attempting to find during a quest. It isn't known whether or not the legends about the mythical figure are true, that of him being kept alive by magic in a castle. That is, until Merlin comes face to face with the man himself in his throne room. Merlin is offered precious water from the Lake of Avalon by the Withered Being, with the Fisher King asking only that he be put out of his misery in exchange to cap off both the life of a legend and a hauntingly beautiful scene. Number 8, Thomas and Tim Friends It takes an awful lot to upstage arguably the most hilarious collection of leading characters ever assembled in sitcom history. However, comedy titans Robin Williams and Billy Crystal were both more than up to the task. When the pair decided to drop by Central Perk during Season 3, the one with the ultimate fighting champion. The story goes that Williams and Crystal weren't originally set to appear in the episode. However, the pair were in the neighborhood, so the writers thought it'd be fun to include the improvisational wizards in the episode's opening. Opening. A completely improvised exchange between two pals by the name of Thomas and Tim sees Williams putting on an outrageous accent and complaining about the fact he thinks his wife is cheating on him with a gynecologist. Before long, Crystal's Tim reveals that he is in fact the other man, prompting the two to explode and storm out of the coffee shop. It's not hard to see why Monica completely forgot what the hell she was initially talking about as the side-splitting dust settled. Number 7, Ned Miller, Frasier He may have only been present for a grand total of one scene during his only appearance on NBC's smash hit sitcom Frasier, but John Glover only went and grabbed himself an Emmy nomination for his stellar, if short, work back in season 1. After spending the episode trying to avoid office gossip, only to become immersed in it, Frasier attempts to get Bulldog Briscoe's job back, largely due to the fact that the sportscaster only left his role after overhearing Frasier spread gossip regarding his rumoured fight. Enter Glover in the role of Ned Miller, KACL's brash and unapologetic station manager. In an unexpected turn of events, Frazier then manages to get Bulldog's job back, gets fired from his job, before Miller is unceremoniously cut loose instead due to his own rather high salary. That last shocking twist also opens the door for a smug Kelsey Grammer to deliver a brilliant regurgitation of the smarmy speech Miller had literally just fed his sacked employee minutes before, telling him that, as they say in the theatre, Every exit is but an entrance to somewhere else. Well played, my friend. Number 6, James Rhodey Rhodes, Falcon and the Winter Soldier Earning an Emmy nomination on the back of stealing the show in a riotous guest appearance is somewhat understandable. However, in the case of Don Cheadle's turn as James Rhodey Rhodes, even the actor himself couldn't get his head around how he'd qualified for a nod on the back of his brief appearance in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's not that the Academy Award nominee was bad. Far from it, as the star lent his usual combination of gravitas and tongue-in-cheek humor to the short scene inside of the Smithsonian. It's just that the scene in question doesn't really give Cheadle much to do. Outside of letting Sam Wilson know that he could indeed be the person to fix this now broken world. And just like that, Rhodey told Sam he'd be in touch and the scene was done. Sure, it planted a seed in the Falcon's mind that he could one day take up the mantle of Captain America. But it's not hard to see why Cheadle and many others were caught off guard by his 2021 awards nod for the short scene. Number 5, John Cleese and Eleanor Bronze Art Critics, Doctor Who 
Another case of two brilliant thespians just so happening to be in the vicinity during the shooting of a world famous TV show. Here we have the time John Cleese and Eleanor Braun suddenly showed up in the thick of a Doctor Who serial. Script editor Douglas Adams knew the duo from his connections with Monty Python and Footlights, so requested to use the two stars upon hearing they'd be in the BBC Television Centre on the same day they were set to shoot some scenes. The pair's appearance in the show wasn't publicised in advance, so the sight of them admiring the TARDIS during season 17 City of Death caught just about everyone watching on by surprise back in 1979. The true cherry on the top of this outstanding sub-minute showing comes in the form of Bronze perfectly timed retort of exquisite, as the Doctor, Romana and Duggan dart off into the vessel and it disappears shortly after. The same could be said for the pair's brief dance with the Doctor as a whole, to be honest. Number 4. Harley Quinn Arrow Arguably one of the most unmistakable voices in all of the DC Universe can be routinely found falling out of everyone's favourite pudding in everything from big screen adaptations to much loved animated productions. Should the devilish Harley Quinn arrive on the scene in any of those aforementioned worlds however, the potential to overshadow just about everyone joining her on screen is pretty much inevitable. And that's precisely what went down when the well known character popped up on the CW's Arrow during Season 2's Suicide Squad episode. Instead of causing chaos chaos and making life hell for all who stood in her path though, on this occasion Quinn simply dropped a one-liner so good it pretty much dwarfed everything else that followed in said entry. As John Diggle and Lila Michaels squabble about the concept of leading Task Force X, Quinn offers the pair some assistance, brilliantly quipping, do you cuties need some counselling? I'm a trained therapist, you know. Unfortunately, this tease wouldn't lead anywhere in the end, but it was still pretty cool to hear Tara Strong, the voice of Quinn in many a video game and show, reprising the vocal role here. Number 3. Patrick Stewart, sort of, extras With his more comedic performances in the likes of American Dad, Ted and even the Emoji Movie, yes, that was a comedy apparently, fresh in most modern audiences' minds, it's easy to forget that Sir Patrick Stewart wasn't known for stepping outside of his more dramatic comfort zone for a large portion of his illustrious career. That's what made his jaw-dropping one-scene wonder in Ricky Gervais' Extras, the hit comedy show centred around folks playing extras in various projects, such a memorable turn in 2005. Not afraid to make a tit of himself on national television, the Shakespearean legend did exactly that. Upon being offered a copy of Andy's script, this Stuart caricature proceeds to let loose an unexpected monologue which reveals the synopsis for his own project he's currently writing, that of a Professor X type character who undresses women with his mind. And before you ask, no it most definitely is not a comedy. It's worth noting that Jude Law was said to have been attached to this particular part at one stage, but we doubt his perverted caricature of himself would have led to as many awkward giggles as Stuart's horny old man shtick did in the end. Number 2. Lord Flashheart, Blackadder II It was said that Rick Mail only appeared to appear as Blackadder II's now legendary Lord Flashheart on one condition. His character got more laughs than Rowan Atkinson's titular lead. Judging from how his explosive and iconic tour de force portrayal of the arrogant debonair went down in the end, I think it's safe to say he got his wish. In the space of about three minutes, Flashheart explodes through the ceiling, throws Percy through a badly constructed door, hits on and backs at the Queen of England, but the aforementioned thrown out former best man, gets off with Blackadder's fiance on the day of their wedding, before swapping clothes with said fiance and ultimately running away with her at the speed of light. If there's ever been a more audacious three minute spell in comedy history than that of Flash Art completely hijacking Blackadder's big day with a spring in his step and a canoe in his pocket, then we're yet to see it. And that's likely the reason the character's narcissistic descendant popped up in Blackadder Goes Forth a few years later too. Fans simply couldn't get enough of the Flash Art. Woof! Number 1. Huge Ass The Simpsons If there's one thing Bart Simpson loves more than terrorizing civilians and riding around on his skateboard without a helmet, it's prank calling the local boozer when boredom suddenly strikes. However, in one of the most memorable unexpected gags of the series now 32 seasons, that spiky haired rascal gets an unanticipated surprise in the form of perhaps the nicest man in animation history. Just a shame about his name then. On the back of Bart calling up Moe's Tavern, now going by the name of Flaming Moe's, and requesting to speak to Hugh Jass, none other than that very man happily accepts the call from the bartender. Watching the eldest Simpson child squirm as his trusty prank goes disastrously wrong is brilliant enough, but the way the unfortunate Hugh Jass brushes off the joke at his name's expense, and even comments on the scamp being a nice young man, is as memorable as it is slightly tragic. Either way, no one forgot that huge ass in a hurry.
And that's our list. Know of any other TV characters who only appear in one scene? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and go and click on that subscribe button. I've been Gareth from WhatCulture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this video today. And I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.